All right, let's get started. So hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to the, oh, what is it, the fourth or fifth Mobi Summit. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of ground to cover. Lots of stuff happened since the last one in, uh, in LA. Uh, that was only uh, a, month, uh, a month ago. Uh, and um, so first, I'll just recap the news from, uh, uh, from uh, day one, which is uh, now uh, Docker supports uh, two orchestrators, uh, both Swarm and Kubernetes. And for you who have been part of the community, uh, many of you would have seen that coming because a lot of that work happened in the open uh, in the Mobi project. So since we uh, released Mobi uh, at DockerCon uh, back, in, uh, back in April, uh, it's been super successful. We've seen lots of people taking the bits and pieces, uh, the components that Mobi creates uh, to do their own uh, thing, uh, create their own custom container systems. Uh, we're going to hear about that today. Uh, Mobi at Docker, we're using that uh, as our upstream for building Docker Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. Uh, and it's composed of lots of different uh, components and projects in there. Some of them uh, are assembled in, uh, all of them are assembled in Mobi. Uh, some of them belong to uh, other organizations. For example, ContainerD now is part of CNCF. Uh, we're in the process of donating uh, notary as well, or contributing notary to CNCF. Uh, and if you're looking at the timeline, um, so it started with uh, ContainerD 1.0. Uh, the design for it uh, came from requirements uh, from the Kubernetes team about what would be an ideal runtime for Kubernetes. Uh, then there was the donation of ContainerD to CNCF. Uh, then uh, uh, Linux Kit and CNCF, or Lin Linux Kit and Kubernetes demoed at DockerCon last year. Uh, so Elias here, he's going to uh, uh, to talk about that. Uh, the the CRI ContainerD work of integrating uh, ContainerD in um, Kubernetes via the CRI interface uh, is in alpha right now. So Lantao is going to uh, uh, to talk to you about that today. Lib Network and CNI. So that's uh, more recent work that we demoed at uh, Open Source LA, uh, op uh, Mobi um, at the Mobi Summit uh, a month ago. Uh, and then the beta of uh, Docker with Kubernetes uh, support is kind of uh, assembling all these projects together uh, uh, to build a, a platform. So there are lots of people who were involved in these projects. These are just a few of them. You'll see many of them on stage today to just go in the details of uh, uh, what their projects are about and what you can do with them. Uh, but beyond this Kubernetes integration, one of the things that I found pretty exciting uh, over the past few months uh, is to see uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of people taking the Mobi pieces and doing their own thing. Uh, so Rancher will demo some pretty cool stuff they've built with that. Uh, Resin.io as well, uh, and there are, there are others. Uh, one of the important news that happened and that didn't make much noise, uh, uh, but that happened in the community that, uh, uh, that is pretty important for the Mobi project, one of the feedback that we received uh, over the... Uh, over the past year uh, is that the BDFL model uh, didn't fit for every organization's need uh, in most of the Mobi projects. And so Michael Crosby has been working uh, on, with, uh, with, with feedback from a uh, lot of uh, community leaders uh, from both the Kubernetes community, the Mobi community, uh, about changing the governance model, like getting rid of the BDFL clause. And so he created a repo that's uh, Mobi slash TSC. Uh, so it's, uh, the, the notion here is to create a technical steering committee that would be there uh, to solve technical escalations. So when, when there's a technical disagreement in the maintainer community of a specific project, they could escalate that to that TSC that would be elected. And so there's a process right now where he started that uh, there's going to be elections and then the different projects can choose to change their governance uh, to get rid of the BDFL clause and uh, link to that uh, TSC and use that TSC as a resource for them to resolve conflicts as opposed to using a BDFL. So I expect to see a lot of uh, PRs in the different Mobi projects uh, over the next few months, uh, replacing just that BDFL clause. And uh, the TSC itself is an open source project, so if you think uh, it should be enhanced, uh, just send us a PR. 
so let's talk about the agenda, what, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so uh, Tim is going to talk to us about uh, Kubernetes and Docker. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll have uh, some updates on Infraket. Uh, so David, David is going to uh, give us an update on um, Infraket and the integration with Kubernetes work that he's been doing. Uh, then uh, Stephen Kaufer and David Freitag from IBM are going to give us a demo of uh, using Infraket uh, to declare your infrastructure. We'll take a break after that. So we're going to have lots of demos and, uh, uh, in, in these talks. And then at 10.30, uh, we'll have a whole section on Linux Kit. So Linux Kit has been super popular uh, in the past few months. Uh, so Justin and Riaz uh, and Ilya are going to give us uh, an update on Linux Kit. Uh, and then we'll have a demo by Andrew Wafa from ARM about uh, Linux Kit on ARM. Uh, then Petros uh, Angelatos from Resin.io is going to talk about the Balena project. Uh, so this one seems very exciting to me. And the most exciting thing about it is that uh, I hadn't heard about it at all. Uh, and when, when it shipped last week, it's like, wow, these are people who are doing some really cool stuff with Linux Kit. And when I read the blog post about Balena, which is a, a system that's designed for IoT and that's using Linux Kit and ContainerD, uh, one of the things that struck me that uh, it was exactly uh, the reason for which we had created Mobi in the first time, in the first place, which is like providing different components that people can assemble differently when their use case uh, doesn't fit with what the Docker platform uh, provides. So we'll, we'll have a talk by Petros uh, explaining what they did there. There's some pretty cool innovation there. Uh, and then Sven, uh, an ex-Docker uh, employee who's, uh, who's now at Rancher, uh, is going to uh, tell us how they're using uh, Linux Kit to build uh, custom Rancher OS systems. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, then at 11.30, we'll have an update on ContainerD uh, by uh, uh, Stephen and Phil. Uh, and then uh, um, Abby and Lantao uh, are going to talk about the ContainerD and CRI integration. So we saw a demo of that at the last, uh, at the last summit. I think the integration is even more complete now. Uh, so then we'll take a break for lunch, uh, and in the afternoon, uh, Tonis is going to talk about BuildKit. Uh, personally, that's one of the projects that I found uh, the most interesting in the whole Mobi project. Uh, there are lots of potential for BuildKit to change the way we're building software. Uh, so he'll talk about the, how BuildKit is structured and uh, how you can create different front-ends and back-ends for it. Uh, after that, we'll have a section on security, uh, so container and app security uh, uh, by uh, Nassim Edekiak. And then uh, security scanning and notary uh, by David Lawrence. So notary, uh, we started the process to uh, uh, contribute to CNCF. Uh, it's been accepted, so you're, you're going to hear uh, some news about that, uh, and, and David is going to give us an update on this. So notary and tough. Uh, and then, uh, so after that, we'll have uh, uh, one of the topics that's been very hot uh, at DockerCon and that's been very hot in the container industry uh, in the past six months has been serverless. Uh, and we had a panel about that uh, at, uh, at DockerCon yesterday, uh, with, uh, uh, and the, the panelists are going to come and, and talk about the, their various uh, platforms. So we have uh, Chad Arimura, uh, represented the FN project that Oracle open source at Java One recently. Uh, Alex Ellis is going to talk about OpenFast, uh, which works both on Swarm and Kubernetes. Uh, and then Phil Estes is going to talk about uh, OpenWhisk and explain in the details uh, the uh, architecture of OpenWhisk. I'm just kidding, Phil. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the panel yesterday, uh, you said, mm, OK, I, I'm doing the underpinning of that, uh, of that platform, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know the architecture completely. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about networking with Lib Network and CNI. Uh, we'll talk to you about uh, a, new pro or a new project that um, uh, we've been talking about with Weave uh, called Open Overlay. Uh, so Ilya is going to talk about that. 
Uh, and then we'll have the EastIO team uh, present. And I, I'm really happy to have the EastIO team present here at the Mobi Summit, because uh, this is really uh, an embodiment of what we talked about in the keynote. We're just one community. And wh when I came here this morning, uh, Lee was uh, making fun, uh, saying, uh, uh, I, I have my uh, uh, CNCF t-shirt. <laughs> I, I, I thought I would have to hide it. You don't have to hide it here. We're, we're part of the same community here. Uh, then we'll take a break, and then in the afternoon, uh, we'll have some buff sessions, uh, so six of them running in parallel about a lot of the topics like RunC and ContainerD, Linux Kit, InfraKit, BuildKit, one on serverless and one on security, and then we'll do a recap at, uh, at five. So that's it. It's a pretty crammed agenda. Uh, one of the most interesting aspects here is to discuss among each other uh, about uh, what we're building and what our projects are about. Uh, so one of the things that I'm really excited about, uh, uh, about this announcement at DockerCon, that uh, um, Docker now supports uh, both Swarm and Kubernetes, is that this will really help us uh, like work together as a community uh, with Mobi and the Kubernetes community. And, and it's true that we're one big community. And to talk about that, uh, uh, Tim, uh, if you can say a, a few words about that uh, before we go to the next talk. Test. We're on. Yep. So uh, thanks, uh, Patrick. Uh, I, I didn't actually know I was going to be speaking. So <laughs> I'm just going to kind of wing it. Um, and I'll only do a couple of minutes. Um, I, I, I'm super excited about this uh, collaboration now. This is something we've sort of been talking about and working on um, for a while. And I'm really happy that we're able to make it come to fruition. Um, but the truth is we have a lot of work to do. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of places uh, where Kubernetes and Docker and Kubernetes and this ecosystem fit really, really well together. Containerd is a great example. I mean, it, it is literally uh, custom, custom designed to fit this hole. Um, but there's other places where, uh, where we have to do some um, bridging and some um, impedance matching to try to make things work. Uh, and so I'll, you know, I'll just mention briefly some of the places where I've spent my time um, in the Kubernetes ecosystem um, where I think we're going to have uh, some, some rough edges that we're going to have to sand out over the next six to 12 months. Um, storage is going to be an interesting topic. Uh, you know, Docker has a storage system and Kubernetes has a storage system and they're a little bit different in how they approach things. Um, so we're going to have to figure out how to bridge these two together. Um, I'm hopeful that it is very possible. Um, for anybody who's been paying attention, we have this project called CSI, the Container Storage Interface. Uh, it's a joint project between Docker people, Kubernetes people, uh, Cloud Foundry people, and Mesos, um, which is a approximately all of the major orchestration systems out there, um, which is very hopeful. Um, they've been working on a, um, a specification so that storage vendors can write one driver and actually have that driver work across these different systems. The spec is uh, almost ready to go beta, I think. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, hefty specification, but it looks really solid to me. Uh, they're working out the last few details of security and identity and those sorts of things. Um, but it looks like a great specification. So I, I'm very hopeful that this calendar year, in 2018, um, we'll see uh, an open standard that we can actually use across uh, systems that will give us a, a bridge between these systems for storage. Um, and I'm happy to talk more about that. Unfortunately, I, I can't stick around uh, all day today, but um, if anybody wants to talk about storage, please send me email or, or get on the uh, CSI working group, um, and we're happy to talk about it. Um, Another place where I think we're going to have to do a lot of work is around networking. Uh, Docker has a networking model and Kubernetes has a networking model and they don't always agree on things. Um, uh, it's sort of historically a rough spot. Um, the fact that there's now a CNI driver for a lib network is great. Um, I always knew that it was possible to bridge. It was just needed somebody to champion it uh, and push that through. So I'm, I'm super happy to see that. Um, this is one of those places where the closer two things are to each other, the harder they are to become the same. Um, we're going to have to do some work here, honestly, uh, this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be challenging. We're going to have to find some compromises and, and figure out how, how to make these ideas uh, work together. Um, 
and I hope that we can retain the, the API compatibility that we've got so far. Uh, the fact that, that this Docker demo this week was done entirely on Kubernetes extensions was pretty awesome to me. Uh, so like serious kudos to the team for, for making that work with no core changes. Um, yeah. That said, I expect that uh, we will run into walls eventually and uh, we will need changes to Kubernetes to further accommodate the things that the Docker platform wants to be able to deliver. Um, and that's totally okay because now we can work in the open, thank goodness. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to say, like, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. We could probably get that done in Kubernetes. It's another thing to push a patch through saying, we need this, but I can't tell you why. Um, so, so I'm glad that we can actually get things done. Um, and for the record, I, we never had to do anything for, for the Docker folks for this. They, they worked completely within the bounds of what was already there. Um, so on that, I, I would like to touch on the idea of the Swarm interface and the Kubernetes interface and which ones should I use and so I've already had a lot of people asking me this week like does this mean I should switch from Swarm to Kubernetes, which one should I learn? Um, and I think the answer is you should, you should look at them both and you should learn the one that makes the most sense to you. Um, Kubernetes has always sort of drawn a box for itself and said these are the boundaries that Kubernetes wants to live in and we don't want to become a platform as a service. We don't want to take too strong of, of, a, of an opinion on things um, and we expected that we were not the top of the cake, right? that there would be layers on top of us. And you can see this in products like OpenShift uh, which Red Hat put out very early in the Kubernetes life cycle and said we're going to take this Kubernetes infrastructure, we're going to take more opinionated approach, we're going to add things that are outside the box for Kubernetes but we're going to do this because we think our users want this. This is exactly how I see this swarm offering. It is a more opinionated layer on top of Kubernetes. It takes the vast Kubernetes surface area and reduces it to something that uh, Docker believes is really valuable to its users through the swarm interface, through the compose file. Um, and that's fantastic. That's completely in bounds. There is absolutely no conflict with the Kubernetes project in that regard. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, and in fact, I'd like to see more of these. I'd like to see people building up and up and up, you know, with more opinionated, narrower surface areas uh, so that they can do what they need to do for their organizations and, and their companies and their teams. Because every team works differently and, and the opinions that we take at one level are not going to apply uh, for everybody at the next level. So. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that um, and there's going to be places where Kubernetes needs to grow up. Uh, there's going to be ideas that cross propagate that, that Docker has done that are great that are going to bring down into Kubernetes I hope uh, and there's going to be places where the way Kubernetes has done things will hopefully shift the way Swarm has done things so that we can uh, align better. Um, that said, it's going to be a busy year um, so we need help from you know everybody here, the, you guys are the, the core of this community and um, you know the Kubernetes community is, is large, the Docker Mobi community is large, um, it's sort of like two galaxies colliding. Um, you know they say galaxies are, are huge but they're so um, sparse that they can collide and no two things will ever actually hit each other, right? Um, I think we're pretty much in that situation um, and so I hope that we can start seeing uh, Kubernetes patches from all of, all of you guys. Uh, all of you Docker captains can become Kubernetes captains. Uh, that's sort of redundant. Uh, uh, we don't have a captain's program, but I'll make one if I have to. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, not that I don't get too many PRs a day anyway, um, but I'm happy to review and guide and help people figure out how to do this. Um, I was speaking with people earlier today, you know, how do you, how should people start to get involved in Kubernetes? And the only answer is to jump in. Um, it seems daunting, it seems like a lot of surface area, a lot of code, a lot of project. Um, but the only way that you learn a project like this is just to start, start somewhere and, and dig in. We have a few hundred, okay, a few thousand open bugs um, and we're looking for people to come and help us. And if you spend an hour in the Kubernetes code and you don't find something you want to fix, you're not looking hard enough. Um, I'm open to all PRs whether those are spelling fixes, refactorings, comments, renames, whatever uh, and I hope that we can start to uh, get these communities really more deeply integrated and um, so I see the clock is running out so I'll just say uh, thanks to everybody at the Docker side who made this happen and welcome to everybody here. Um, I'm going to be around for the next hour um, so I'll probably sneak out at about the half hour and have any conversations that people want to have before I have to run and uh, catch a plane home. So, thanks.
Yeah.